Hi, everyone. Guess what time it is? Oh. I forget that there's no intro <laughs> before you start. Well, we're back. I know that I said that it would probably be a while before I did this one. Um, maybe I lied a little because I really couldn't stop thinking about it once I finished the last Phoenix Wright game. And guys, I'm loving these so much that I do think it's time for me to start what I think might be the most controversial game. And this is me not knowing anything about it because all I know is what I hear from other people. And I think a lot of the people that I heard from about this game were 50-50 on it. 50% love this as like the best. And then 50% were like, eh. Well, I hope that if you're one of the eh people that you won't give this a pass just to try to see. Maybe I'll put a new spin on it that you've never thought of before because I am playing this for the first time and I've never seen any of it. So here we go. Let's start. Ace Attorney, Apollo Justice. I almost said Phoenix Wright, Apollo Justice. I don't think he's even in this game. I'm pretty sure not. Turn about Trump. If Trump shows up in this, I swear to God, don't do it. No, please. Whoa. Ooh. Oh, yeah, painting. I can relate to this. Oh. oh, it's animated. Almost. Whoa. Holy moly. What is going on here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's happening? This is so cool. Showdown time. Ooh. Yeah. Heart of the cards. What's going on? You lose. Wow. Oh, oh no, the bottle. Uh oh, someone's gotten shanked. What happened there? Oh, dude, you shouldn't have had that ace up your sleeve. Maybe that's not what even happened, who knows. Hello? I answer your phone. I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should have come to that. What's happened? What the hell is that? What's going on here? God, these always start out the same way and they start so great. Oh, this looks familiar. Are we going to start as Phoenix? Honestly, I don't even know if he's in this game. And when I ask questions like that, it's obviously theoretical, in case anyone's just here for the first time. When I do these blind LPs, I pose a lot of questions to myself. But as usual, I would like to have no spoilers in the comments. If possible, please try. You can give me tips and tricks to help make the game better. Um, but please don't spoil anything because we're gonna go through it together. This isn't Phoenix. We're starting right out with Apollo, who I assume is the dude on the cover, right? The dude with the spikes. Okay. I'm probably just gonna give him the same voice that I give Phoenix. I really hope Phoenix doesn't show up, because that'll be awkward. Panicked. Pumps sweaty. Oh, I can admit it. I'm nervous. Ah, uh, good morning. I don't know who that is. Oh! Oh, hi. Damn, who's this, though? Yo, who's this? Alright, I like where this is starting already. G good morning, sir. Christoph? Boy, let me tell you. Is he German? Maybe Norwegian? Swedish? Could be anything. Or none. You look tense, Justice. Wound up tight. Man, I tensed up a little when I saw you only because you were so beautiful. Wound up, sir. No, I I'm loose. I'm fine. Oh, yeah. We're starting out with this already. <laughs> Well, in, in true Phoenix Wright fashion, I'm going to make a euphemism out of everything I can because everybody in this game is very hot. Well, most everybody, anyway. That screeching noise, is that your voice? I suppose it's to be expected. He's never heard him before? What? Your first trial, and it's a homicide. I guess Justice doesn't start small, eh? That's a real name, Apollo Justice. That's a fucking great name, though. So we're here again, with the first trial being our first trial. This has happened before. So here we are again doing this, eh? I I'm fine. I got up at 5 a.m. to do my Chords of Steel voice workout. I'm fine. Oh my god, is this real? Ah, <laughs> uh, that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your screech. <coughs> I overdid it again. Oh my god. Oh, guys, I'm already in love. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down. If you get my drift... Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's a euphemism. Is it your boyfriend? 
But honestly, don't worry about it, because by the time we're done with this, he won't be your boyfriend anymore. I will. Drift gone, sir. I I'm all over that drift. <laughs> yeah. God, this is starting off just as I hoped it would. As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. I see. I really hope this guy's a good guy. I always seem to fall for the bad guys, you guys. It happens a lot. I hope that doesn't happen here. Yes. Yes, I'm fine, sir. One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. Oh. Okay. Ooh. I'll be preparing our case. Is he like... Oh my god, is he like my Mia? Please tell me he is. And if he is, please don't let him die. Oh god. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. I'll do that. Where are they? Let's go see. My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. And today is my first trial. Not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of murder. Who the hell gives all these new attorneys these murder cases? My boss wants to help him out, of course, and so do I. Oh, it's your boss, is it? Well, I don't mind having such a hot boss. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him. No way. If it's Larry, I swear to fuck. There's no way that someone else in a different place could know Larry, right? Please tell me it's not him. What the? Is this hobo? Okay, I'm nervous now. Because he looks a little bit like Phoenix, but he couldn't be Phoenix. Look at him. Boy, you couldn't even get dressed up for court? You're in big trouble. Whoa. Hello? Good, uh, morning. Hi, can you speak? Morning. It's all up to you today. First trial. Nervous. Meeting him. Cardiac arrest. Yes, yeah, seriously, who is this dude? Are we gonna find out his name? I probably need to know that before I go into the, the, the court, okay? I need to know that at least. I think I'm supposed to say something. Um, help? <laughs> so you're... Fine. I'm fine. No, Apollo, he told you not to do that anymore. Uh, Mr. Fine, is it? Uh, I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Well, you did this. Um, are you sure you're okay? I, I mean, with me. Doesn't seem to be too worried. It actually seems a little too calm to be real. Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney. And he's your friend. So, why? You'll see. Eh? Uh? You can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. Uh, I mean... I mean, I... It's time. Shall we? Yes, sir! Wait, I didn't even find out your name! Oh, God. Okay. I need to focus. First trial. Here comes justice. Oh, boy. I'm ready. April 20th, 10 a.m. District Court. <gasps> is my Is my judge back, though? Because surely I get that attorneys change over time, but is my boy back? I can't see from here. Who hit it? Yay! I'm so happy! Judge! You are a cypher-sorite boy! How is your head? How's your beard? Oh my god, I'm so glad he's back! This is how much I miss this game! Court is now in session. Oh my Christ, what happened to you? Boy! You ain't making enough money to fucking buy yourself a fucking mop to put on your head? What is that? Peridot! You've fallen very far, my friend! The prosecution is ready, your honor! Ooh, look at- ooh! Apollo really is cute, isn't he? I'm in love. Uh, the defense is fine. Uh, uh, I mean, ready, Your Honor. Oh my God, he's a bit dope. He's a bit dopey, but that's okay. We'll fix him. Oh my God, <laughs> look at his face. He's so cute. Oh dear, bless. Mind going blank. Don't panic. Ah, too late. Your name was uh, Mr. Justice, and this is your first trial. Y yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, but I'm fine, really. You don't have to keep saying it. You quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. Oh no, it's okay, buddy. Uh, Mr. Mr. Gavin? Oh, hello. Yes, Your Honor. Boy, I would like to see more of you. I was under the impression that you would be heading up this curse. 
Oh, that was my intention, yeah. However, a defense attorney must always cede his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. I wonder why? It doesn't seem like we know each other. Well, of course he wants justice. Oh, uh, but to entrust his case to this greenhorn, why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience, fine. But does he have cords of steel? I don't think that's gonna help! Oh, no. Then let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. Who is it? The the hobo. We don't know who he is. Hello? We're gonna have to say your name now. This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. You know him. It's Phoenix? It actually is? Phoenix, what's happened to you? Why do you look like a hobo? Boy, you couldn't even shave before you walked your ass in here? Long time no see, Mr. Wright. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. How far ahead is this? I don't think I actually know the timeline. Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne. To think, I saw you enter this room a fresh attorney, and now I see you leave in chains. Phoenix, you couldn't even get, like, dressed up for this fool? Look at him! Oh my god. Ah, oh, Winston Payne, subtle as ever, I see. Oh boy. Ugh. The crime occurred at the Borscht Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. That, that certainly is Russian. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him. Wham! On the head, smack, killed him cold. Another thing that happened in a restaurant. This is not the first time. Hmm, a customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant, you say he was... The pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright, a pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life. A bottle of grape juice. What? It wasn't even wine. Oh. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. There's no way that wouldn't have broke if you did it as hard as you say. Alright, we get the bottle. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Oh right, this is going to be much of a tutorial. So I may do the things that they say, and I may not, depending on- Now, I don't know how different this one is from the other games, but I'm going to assume that for most of it, it follows suit. Make a practice of checking it frequently. Oh, I will. The court record. Right! I've heard of that! Use the court record button to look at the evidence so far. Okay, I'll do it just because you told me. Hey! Look at this! We also have the autopsy report. We should probably look at this. The time of death was around 2 a.m. April 17th. Death caused by single blow to the forehead. Let's check. Shaddy Smith, it was a male, we don't know his age. April 17th, between 1.45 a.m. and 2.15 a.m. Cerebral hemorrhaging resulting from blunt trauma to the forehead. All right. Crime photo, the sub-basement at the Borscht Bowl Club. Let's look. Oh, look at that. Looks like a mobster. Definitely do. Cards everywhere. I see a couple of things that look a bit strange, but I'm not sure yet. Alright. And then the bottle. Grape juice bottle used as the murder weapon bears the defendant, Mr. Wright's prince. Alright, they didn't say that before. Oh, it's this again! We've had this before! Where you can, like, look at things 3D? I wonder if that's gonna happen a lot now. We had it in that one last trial that was made afterwards in the game that we played. Grape juice? How long has it been since I drank grape juice? Apparently it's Mr. Wright's favorite drink. I wonder how well it goes with borscht. Grape juice is pretty good, though. I don't know if I should be looking at this yet, because uh, probably something's gonna prompt us to look at it later. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that for now until it prompts me to look at it. Alright, so good to know that we can do that. We also have profiles. I don't know if it's a spoiler. Oh, hello. Oh my god, he's younger than me. Do you think he likes older women? <laughs> Bostick Gavin Law Office is a first-rate defense attorney and my trusted mentor. God, even Phoenix is aged. Look at him. Pianist at the Borscht Bowl Club, formerly an ace defense attorney of some renown. The victim in this case, a traveler, only recently back in country. And oh my god, he's not, he's not very good. 
Not looking good these days. Well, let's go ahead. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right, the court record button. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action. I already did it. So, the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this uh, Shaddy Smith fellow? We believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A traveler? According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He had only returned to this country recently, through his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That, too, is unclear at present, Your Honor. We believe that they first met at the Borscht Bowl Club on the night of the crime. If they'd only just met, then why murder? Yeah, there's no motive. Perhaps the victim slided the defendant's piano playing. That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. Why? No! You can't use that hand motion. You used it before when you had a bunch of hair up there, but now you don't, so don't even start. Probably how you went bald in the first place. At least no piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. What's this? Oh, we just saw it. Oops. I think I looked at it a little early, maybe. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself. It is, probably. Indeed. It appears our defendant has fallen to become the base sort of criminal. Objection! Ooh! But was that him? Or was that me? Who was that? Whoever it was, I'm with it. It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet, it was only that. A game, in the purest sense. Competition, Your Honor. A competition? Yes, a test of wits, silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs read them blue flames, know its final outcome. Wow, you're poetic too? Jeez, I'm having it. Uh, come again? Oh. The cards on the table have blue backs, Your Honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present. Worked. Well, it worked on me anyway. And impress women. Also worked. I think I'm a woman. I'm pretty sure. That will be our first order of business here, then. <laughs> to impress women. <laughs> to find out more about this fatal game of cards. Phoenix, you didn't do it, did you? Uh, Papa, I like your hat, boy. <laughs> Phoenix, what are we gonna do with you? Very well, defendant. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it. My first trial. Here goes nothing. I still want to know whose objection that was. Because <laughs> I don't think it was mine, I'm not sure. All right, the competition. You know how I do it. Let's figure it out. I'm a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. That doesn't make any sense. My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. Oh, I see. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. I see. Hmm. Pianist who can't play piano? Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Is that a jab? At least I have hair. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Alright, here we go. Come on, Apollo. We can do it. My first cross-examination. Don't blow it. Ooh, this music. <gasps> it's good. You're right. Sweating bullets. Don't, don't worry about that. It's the combination of being nervous and seeing you here. It's okay. I'll get better. Bullets. Where... It's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. Oh, my brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times. Though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? What to do? Should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher course? Do I need to? Oh, look at his little sprite! Oh my gosh, he's so adorable! Was Phoenix this cute when we first started? I want to say he probably was. Um... I mean, we've, I've already played the series. I don't want to make a lot of people mad by doing this, but I think I think we're okay. Is it going to be mad at me? We've already played. No need for help here, sir. I think I've got this one covered. Well, we'll see if rip the comments if I did bad. I think you'd better do more than think. You know it, or you do not. I'm fine. The cords of steel are ready for battle. My weapons, press and present. Find any inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it. Know it. Do it. Girl, I'm ready. Inconsistencies. Lies? Phoenix right? Phoenix, you wouldn't lie to me, would you? 
As if. Phoenix Wright would never lie, and it's up to me to prove it. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Now I'm gonna do what I usually do unless I say no, I'm gonna press everything. That's right. Ew, look at Winston's profile picture! It looks nasty, though! Why is he still doing this? Alright, fine. And in this one, I just use my regular voice because I've already voiced it. I'm PS by trade, yeah, I can hardly play at all. Let's go ahead. Oh! Apollo? You can hardly play? Oh, I play sometimes, when customers demand it. So, I play them one song. And that's usually all they want. Was that supposed to be a boast just now? The title of pianist is a mask, a respectable face I wear for the world at large. Then why are you really at the Borscht Bowl Club? To play cards, apparently. My real job is to take on interested customers over at the poker table. Listen to little Apollo, he's so cute. I love this sprite, this is adorable. They pay you just to play poker? That would seem to be the case. I am a professional, after all. Ah, do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yes, your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. Oh, ha, ha. Burn. Peridot just ripped his pants. What? I've played poker for seven years in that little room. Has it been seven years? It's probably been longer than that. And I've never lost once. What? You see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. Phoenix, how did you come to this, though? I wonder if they'll ever explain that. Wait, you've never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? It must be. The room where we play and the competitions in there are the club's main attractions. Alright, tell me more about that. The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction? It has quite a history, actually. Well, the Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. Black market? All in the past. Things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice it to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there in that room. A smoky room, gambling hoods, you know? Just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. The bosses gather around the table, cutting deals, safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through this small window. I see that over there. I can practically picture it now. Phoenix, how did you fall so far? That window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout, but little else. The room had a few other tricks to it, though it was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. So they're saying it used to be bad, where they used to do the bad deals and stuff, but now it's not. The rules are simple, we play a game of poker using two decks of cards. Tell me more about that. Two decks of cards? Simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. That is true. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. That is true. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards upon the floor, each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. You're poetic! <laughs> Guys, I still got it. Incidentally, we used two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, the other blue. That's gonna be important. As I recall, in poker you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. <laughs> yes, a game of hands. What does that mean, Phoenix? Oh my god, wait a sec! Speaking of hands, look how huge Apollo's hands are! Boy! What kind of secrets do you hide? You got the Miyawi hands big time! This competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. That's right. It was a simple game, after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment the crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime? Really? Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. 
Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. <gasps> You're gonna be schooling the judge on what to do? Boy! Of course I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. Uh-oh. I completely let that one slip by! Don't despair yet, Justice. Sir? Right, there's something I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand. And I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? Very well. The defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press. And I've got myself a whole new testimony. That's right. Complete silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. Wait a minute, that's wrong already! No, 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 that's wrong because it says his fingerprints are on it, unless this is wrong. No, okay, here we go. Oh! Polly, you got yourself some lungs there, boy. See, in this sprite, his hands look normal. <laughs> so, you say you didn't touch the murder weapon? This grape juice bottle? Right? So I said. You lying though. Don't lie to me, Phoenix! Something the matter, Mr. Justice? <laughs> Paradox, shut up! Oh my god! <laughs> Swag. Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see? And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. Oh, they're the meowy hands though. Oh my god, they are huge. Never mind. Objection! No need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. Oh. <laughs> Look at him. He's so cute. Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears. In our case. But what about my cords of steel? Just forget it. What about your hands, though? We gotta talk about that some more. Uh, anyway. What's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove he did- Oh, God. Well, it's been a long time since I've heard that. Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. What do you mean? Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted, and there can only be one reason for that. I see. Yes. To brain someone with a bottle. Oh, <laughs> everyone's pa- Oh my god, look at his face! You're not- you don't seem to be too- Your underwear ain't uh, busting too bad about that. <laughs> Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh? I see no problem. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything. You'll see. Defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? Can you, Phoenix? I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Phoenix, why are you being like this? This is so different for you. Not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Objection! Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. Damn, I'll take that objection all day, boy. And what might that be, Mr. Govan? On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright. But still, that... R really Uh, yes, well, according to the case file... How come you didn't bring that up before? Probably because you didn't want anyone to know about it. The murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Do we have that cell phone? Near the scene? Let's take a look at a diagram of the murder scene, shall we? Oh, you hiding that too on me? Show me. The victim was murdered in a small room in a basement two floors down from ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get receptionists so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above ground. Right. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I see. And this is the phone that made the call? His Nokia. We got it. The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime if he so chose. Yet, he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative? Uh, nice save, Mr. Gavin. I'd better not waste time. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. T toyed I assure you no one is more serious about- What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment the crime occurred? How can you possibly know this? 
That's a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a decisive witness. <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. So, someone else was in the room the night of the crime? That must mean they witnessed the crime. That's usually what a witness means, yes. Everything up till now has been a warm-up, Justice. Are you ready? I think so. Very well. The prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. Before I do that, let's look at the cell phone real quick. Used by the defendant to notify the police from the restaurant's first floor. Let's check it. And now it looks like we can seriously check, like, all of these things now, or at least most of them. Oh, what's this? What's that? Wow, the batteries are held in with a piece of tape. He should just buy a new one. Maybe he can't afford it. Or he just doesn't care. That's weird. Okay, let's remember that, shall we? Uh, that's probably gonna come up. Tape? What the- Well, you don't gotta hold the food in here, girl! You can put that down! The witness will state her name and profession. Hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? What is going on? <laughs> girl, you don't have to hold that. You can put it down. I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic-looking horns. So I use a little hair gel. Relax, people. No, it ain't you, Apollo. It's definitely Peridot over there. Looks like a damn gargoyle. Have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. You are sure? I swear it on my gavel. Please, come out. Is it violence against the hair a crime, Your Honor? Well, if you are sure, it is okay. Hello, who are you, dear? Oh gosh, you're so cute! <laughs> no, the prosecution. Oh, w w wait a minute. Would the prosecution care to explain the witness's uh, paraphernalia? She's taking a picture. Uh, yes. She's a professional, Your Honor. Those are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be? My name is Olga Orly. <laughs> oh my god. I am employed as a waitress in Borscht Bowl Club restaurant. Then, why the camera? Of course it is my pride to serve Borscht at his naming restaurant. But I also perform, how is it said, other service. Um, you might want to elapse on that a little bit. Please elaborate. I take it one of these other services is taking customers' pictures? Da, da. Like, um, for example, this one. Oh. Oh, well. <laughs> Nothing like some incriminating evidence in the morning. Th that's... The defendant? Indeed. On the night of the murder... Man in white hat is one who's gone kaput. Indeed. That is the victim. Alright, let's do this. Order, order! This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. Um, it the same way as I drop cold bowls of borscht on laps customers, um, casually. Uh, then the court will casually accept this new evidence. Alright. Let's look at that. Now, Witwist, where were you at the time of the murder? Hang on to that thought. Can we look at this, please? Alright, what's different? Bottle- well, there's bottles everywhere, for one. What's all the shit all over the place? Am I crazy? Like, why does it look like there's snow everywhere? What's that about? It looks weird, doesn't it? I don't know if that's just supposed to direct my eye away from other things. Looks like they were eating, they're having a chat. It doesn't look like they're mad at each other. Alright. I was in the room. The hideout, we call it. Excuse me? The hideout? Uh, it is room where famous gangster Bagdai was arrested. It is room where murder took place. What? <laughs> you are look utter surprise. It is lovely. I will post by a courtroom door later for you. Dada, photos will be numbered and you will write which ones you want copy of. So there were three people in the room at the time of the crime? The victim, Shaddy Smith, Mr. Wright, and... Olga Orly, our witness. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Did she really, though? It's just a little girl. Very well, witness. 
You will testify to the court about that night's events. Well, she's little, but look what happened with Dahlia, right? We didn't think she was anything bad, and look what happened with her. That fateful night. Tell me about it. That night, customer asked me to deal cards for the game. I, it was cold. Both players play Hatsanda. The victim, he plays whole time with his hands unlock it at his neck. Then, last hand is done. But something terrible has happened, da. That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. Hmm. Wait a minute now. Hang on there. That's not what happened. He got hit on the head. Strangled is not what happened. Incidentally, who won the game? Isn't it obvious? The winner was the victim, Mr. Smith. Objection! Ooh. That's ridiculous. Uh, because... Because Mr. Wright can't lose. Uh, justice? Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection? But he hadn't lost in seven years. Take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose a case my first seven years as prosecutor. I, I, I find that very hard to believe. Incidentally, I have some evidence here. What's this, then? All right. These are the poker chips as they lay the very moment of the crime. The hen and chips on this side belong to the defendant, Mr. Wright. Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? Da, I, I mean yes. Imagine that poker is war. Your hand is your army, and the chips are the spoils. I know that. After all, in my youth I was known as... The poker head of courtroom number three. Oh. Sounds gross. I think he means poker face. Hmm, looking at this picture, it does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. Chip photo added to the court record. Hang on now. Very well, the defense may cross-examine the witness. Before I do that, one second, please. Mm-mm. Okay. Just taking it all in. <laughs> don't act like I don't know what I'm doing, because I do. Okay, fine. Let's look. Come on, little lady. That fateful night. Right. That night, customer asked me to deal cards for game. Of course, I'm going to press everything. You were dealing cards? Do you do this often? Da. Nah. I am doing this. Um, if customer wishes it, I serve anything. Borscht cards, more borscht. It is my work. It's good to hear of a place that hasn't forgotten the meaning of a service. Welcome you to Borscht Bowl Club, where borscht is as warm as waitresses. Uh, uh, thank you for not handing out flyers during the cross-examination. It was cold. Both players played with hats on. I think I know what I have to press, but I want to see what she says anyway. It's already April. How could it be cold? At Borscht Bull Club, we have pride on authentic rustic Russian restaurant theme. Outside, it's city in spring, but inside, it is always as cold as Maza Russia. No way am I going to... Is that why there was snow in the picture? <laughs> when it comes to hot borscht, cold is best seasoning, da? Da. Victim, he plays whole time with his hands on the locket as neck. His locket? I believe it was good luck charm, da? He gripped it many times as he played that night. Yes, he must have felt as though it might carry him to the moon and the stars. Though if it was small enough to fit around his neck, it wouldn't have much lift. Uh, the defense would like a clarification. This is a locket we're talking about. I mean, a pendant with a picture in it, right? Not a rocket. Uh, of course, I knew that. It was probably a pendant shaped like a rocket. That's why she called- Oh my god. No, a locket's a locket. It doesn't matter what she- It's considered bad form to poke fun at the heart of hearing in our society. Heart of hearing or heart of understanding? Both. So, what happened next? Then last hand is done, but something terrible has happened. Tell me about that. Something terrible? Ah! Uh the defense will refrain oh, sorry, from needless shouting. Oh, sorry. I need to seriously reconsider this vocal training thing. Same. Now, Miss Orley, can you tell us what happened? 
Oh, I was so frightened. Uh, I trembled with fear. That man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. That is not what happened. Because I have it right here that that didn't happen, madam. Objection! He does shout. Kind of like it though. Oh, really? Strangled? That you say? That's odd. Da. Normal customers only choke on borscht? No, I mean this report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head. Ah! Uh! Miss Orley, really now? Did you witness the crime? Ah! Oh, she dropped her plate. Oh wait, no, she saved it. Damn, girl, that's some skill. Hmm. Looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. He's still wearing his hat and everything. Yes, it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. So did someone put the hat back on his head? Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that's quite a shocking, isn't it? Oh, sorry. So I said, the This head certainly was hit. Oh, we have another crime photo. Well, let's look at that, shall we? But I have seen it happen. Well, you're either lying to me or something weird is going on. And he doesn't have that locket she was talking about either. So where the hell did that go? Hmm. The defendant, he lunged at the victim, his neck. Oh really, Miss Orley? I think I've caught you in your own lie this time. Justice? I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think this one through once more. W what do you mean? I found a contradiction! There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue the cross-examination. There's such a thing as thinking too much. Yeah, there is. This horse is dead. Let's stop beating it. Oh no! You leave that horse alone. There's such a thing as thinking aloud too much too. That night, customer asked me to deal cards for game. It was cold. Both players played with hat on. The victim he plays whole time- Oh! Maybe this is it right here though! With a locket at his neck. But now we see that there isn't one. Is this what I have to do? I'm trying it. Objection! Oh. You know, there was one curious part in her testimony, just like Mr. Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what it is you're thinking so intensely about? Recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on locket at his neck, I believe she said. I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. No, but look at this photograph. Look at this graph! We're back, guys. We are back. Everything's as it should be. Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. Good. I hope I can impress you later. I knew you'd be able to handle this. <laughs> I can handle it. Wait, what? But what does it mean? If we are to believe this witness's testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, someone must have taken it off. No. Taken it off? Wait! You don't mean- The defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Oh! Uh. Oh shoot! Defendant, what do you have to say to this? Phoenix, what did you do? Say? Yes? I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? He's wearing it. Oh, no. What's that about? Well, I hate to do this because I know we're starting off on a trial, but we're gonna have to continue in the next video. I'm gonna try to do the best I can with some of these trials, but because I don't know how long they're going to be, and someone did warn me, uh, thankfully, because I asked how long the first trial was, and they said, it's pretty long. You definitely can't do it in one video. So, in the next one, you'll find out what the heck is happening. But man, this is already shaping up to be even better than I expected. So I really hope you guys are excited for this as much as I am. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.